Welcome, thank you for joining. I am Denise and this is at Tropical Seductions. I built a terrarium for my tropical plants using the IKEA glass cabinet. It has been four weeks since I started and I do consider it finished, but I also realized that this is going to be a never ending process. I try to stay under $500 for the materials, which include the IKEA glass cabinet, the black foam, the silicone. I will have all the materials you need to recreate this specific one down in the descriptions. Plants not included. Most of the plants were for my personal collection, but I did also bought some plants specifically for the terrarium. In this video, I will walk you through from the beginning to the end. I'm gonna start right now. I did not film assembling the IKEA glass cabinet because there are a ton of videos on YouTube about it. I chose the black one. It does come in white and there are three different sizes available. It has three glass shelves. We only need one to build the barrier. We will attach it with silicone to make sure soil and liquids would not exit the terrarium. I found this beautiful driftwood at a local reptile shop for 40 and it fits like a glove. I got myself some bottles of kitchen and bath silicone in white. I applied it to the three sides that will connect the glass to the terrarium. I had many obstacles handling silicone throughout the entire process. When finished applying, I quickly pressed the glass shelf in position and removed excess silicone. Try to do it right away. Trust me, I didn't remove all of it and I regretted it later. I am marking the areas where the big driftwood will have his connection points. It is a very tight fit and otherwise I won't be able to close the door later on. And I just want to mention one more time, this is my very first time building any size of terrarium. I'm protecting my carpet and laying down the um, terrarium after the recommended 60 minute drying period for the silicone. We are using the Great Stuff Pond and Stone Black Foam. Why? Because all of the experienced terrarium vivarium builder here on YouTube recommended it. It says to shake it for 60 seconds and that is what we are doing. I will link the two most helpful YouTubers I watched before starting this process down in the description. It is as simple as it looks. You spray the foam to the part that you decide will be your background, which could also include the sides, but I wanted it to feel as open as possible, so I'm only using the back wall. We are spraying as evenly as we can, but I am also having a design in mind and will add more foam to areas where I want to insert plants and nursery pots. I also will make it thicker in some areas to create depth and make it more interesting. I am wearing gloves, it was recommended and rightful so. I still managed to get foam on arms and fingers and it took me some painful scrubbing to get rid of it. I used a total of 5 cans of great stuff pond and stone and I would have needed 6. Besides adding the plants to the terrarium later on, the foam was one of the most fun tasks. I am adding some holes into the peat nursery pots to help with air circulation and for water to exit. We have arrived at the part where I ran out of foam. I still had to add the nursery pots. The foam was uh, still soft in some areas and I was able to press the nursery pots into the desired areas but at the end I did run out of time and soft foam so I only added 5 of the 8 plant pots. Here we are, we have attached the glass to the terrarium, applied the foam and added the five nursery pots and you can see the shiny black foam, it is already hardening. So it is 12.30 a.m. It's been eight hours since um, I applied the foam and it seems to be dry. I am testing placements for the driftwood and plants and then I will start carving. So the recommended dry period on the can was 8 hours, but terrarium builders recommend 24 hours, which I agree, because I ran into the areas 
where the foam was thicker and upon carving liquid foam pressed itself out. It was not a big deal, I just had to uh, switch and work on other areas. The reason we are carving is that silicone attaches itself more easily on a rough surface and dried foam is shiny and smooth. Also I'm carving out areas and putting in holes where I can place plants, wood or moss easily. I am using a cutter knife and this whole process took me 6 hours. I remove the bigger pieces by hand and I vacuum the smaller pieces and yeah we are on day two. You can see that I did not apply foam to the bottom. I marked it in the beginning so I had a rough idea how high the soil will go. Day two we are laying down the terrarium once more to apply the silicone. I went to bed at 3 a.m., got up at 6.30, got ready and went to buy a silicone gun because I had so many issues getting the silicone out on day one. And here it is, it was $5 and you just twist the handle out and stick in the silicone bottle. Sounds simple, right? It is not. I had so much pain pressing it out and it took forever. Well, I was trying. Oh my god. Because I had so many issues pressing out the silicone, I decided it is best if I work in small areas so that the silicone doesn't dry on me. And I'm just applying it with the gun, and then I'm going in using a paint brush to spread it out evenly and to get in all these small areas. And then I'm going to apply the medium of my choice and I chose sphagnum moss, but you can use peat moss or coco core. I chose sphagnum moss because the plants I am planting in it will be mostly tropical plants and they love sphagnum moss. I also added rain deer moss, which I highly regretted. The same day I removed 90% of it because it gave the terrarium a fairy garden look and not the rainforest look that I was going for. And I also added um, dry green moss. So I found out for what this here is to like open the seal inside. Huh? Just a quick update on my successes. Check it in with you guys. It is 4 p.m. We've been doing this since 10. So six hours. That seems to be the magic number for me here. Everything takes around six hours. I still have a little bit left. The silicone is a evil spirit. It's giving me so much trouble, but only this little piece left. It's a total mess in here. So it's been one hour the recommended dry period for the silicone and we are going in to remove excess moss but also to see if there are any areas where we might need to reapply. What I forgot to mention I did add, you can see here on the right, I did add cocoa core as well. Um, as the sphagnum moss and the green moss and like I said all the neon that you are seeing is the reindeer moss which I will remove later completely so the base will be covered with um, charcoal and then I will add orchid bark and coco core and a little bit of um, soil just a tiny bit of soil so all the neon reindeer moss will be removed. I had to um, come up with something and added these two boxes. The driftwood needed something stable to sit on, otherwise it was moving all the time. So that's why you see the two black boxes. It is 9 p.m. on day two. We've been working since 10, so what is that, 11 hours? This is how far we got. And you can see I removed the uh, green, the neon green moss from the base, but I haven't removed it from the wall yet. And the driftwood is inside. It has something stable to sit on. 
and I'm already liking what I'm seeing so I'm super excited so for the rest of the night it's just going to be rearranging plants putting them in see if they work in certain areas that that is the most I can manage tonight So it is day three and we are doing more rearranging. I removed some plants that I thought um, didn't work well in the terrarium, at least not in the space that I put it yesterday. And okay, so my boyfriend woke up and he looked at the terrarium and he said, oh, this is beautiful. It looks like Jurassic Park. So I love Jurassic Park, don't get me wrong, but I wanted it to look like deep in the rainforest, dark green with tropical plants and arrowheads and a few ferns. So now I have to step back and see why does it look that way. And it looks that way because of the light brown driftwood, the beige sphagnum moss and the ferns that I added. So now I have to do some more trimming. I'm actually going to rip out a lot of the sphagnum moss. So uh, you can see this bothered me a lot. <laughs> I'm actually ripping away the sphagnum moss and you can see in the box I have been ripping out a lot of moss. <laughs> This is how much moss we removed so far and I like it much more but it still has that vibe and it looks beautiful but you can see that fern on the right side that is attached to the wood. That's the evil one that makes it look like Jurassic Park. Yes, that is living moss. Some of the living moss that I ordered arrived, not all of it, but it already makes a huge difference. So I placed it on the um, ground and on the trees and you can see that the plants are lowering it. They are putting out roots to attach themselves to the living moss and the dark green just makes a whole lot of difference. And the Verrocosum is acclimating, it is dropping two of its four leaves but it is also working on a new leaf, so I have no hard feelings here. And there's a few plants that have some yellow leaves, but overall, besides the evil fern, every plant is doing well. So I have run into two issues. One is fungus nets, and I should have not added any soil, but I did. So I have a huge fungus net problem. I applied some of the yellow sticky tape, and I ordered some more, and then I have the uh, clip-on fan, which I usually apply here to help with airflow, but I, it's already mold is building as you can see so I actually went ahead and ordered some spring tails which I'm going to release inside of the um, terrarium so more of the um, moss arrived which I'm super excited about I ordered different kinds of mosses you can see the verrucosum is dropping its leaves now fully they're completely yellow and the gloriosum is about to open its leaf you know, when I um, edited it, it was only a stump with no leaf, so it's really enjoying the terrarium. Let's take a look there. These are one of the um, mosses I ordered, and they are beautiful and have a blue shimmer if the light hits it in a certain way. So I'm excited. I'm going to place them inside the terrarium today as well and there's other mosses that also arrived it's happening the drill is here and we are attaching the grow lights i already pressed one in and i will have the link down below it came with the double-sided tape already so we're pressing them here on the sides and then we're going to drill the holes i already tested the grow lights before i attach them don't worry so we're gonna need one hole which i have to drill into the metal so i'm not gonna lie this took me 40 minutes a lot of sweat a lot of screaming and frustration but yes it is done okay first test 
If everything goes well, I will hide these here like I did the rest, but this is just for the test. So only one is working, but it was because I didn't uh, screw it in correct correctly. So that is it. This is the final product after four weeks and we're going in. Here you can see the little clip on fan that I'm using to help with air circulation. So a lot of things have changed up here. I added an Ethereum VGI and I moved the totem, which I have to be honest. It's putting out a new leaf and I can see that there is not enough space for it. So I might have to do some rearranging again. And I changed out, I removed the Neon Peperomia, which was the exact one which was hanging here. I removed it and placed in some living tree moss. And I like it so much more. And yeah, I added a bunch of the living green moss and now i'm just hoping for it to get darker this is the color i am wishing for for all of the moss in the background but it's gonna take some time and it will happen naturally so i just have to stay patient we have added a ficus velosa just to mention a few of the plants that are in here the grow lights are still doing great i will link them down below Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you will be notified when I upload the updated terrarium video, which will be coming, I promise. I'm also going to film a in-depth video of all the plants inside of the terrarium. So we're gonna call it the terrarium plant tour. And I'm also working on a brand new house plant tour for you guys. And if you are considering recreating a terrarium using the IKEA glass cabinet, please feel free to tag me and share it with me. I would love to see it. You can find me on Instagram at Tropical Seductions.